<laughs> hey guys, it's Kelly and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, hi, I'm Kelly and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. I also like to give car buying tips and tricks, especially for any women, mothers, or first time car buyers. I have actually been selling cars since 2016 and my family owns some car dealerships here in the St. Louis area. Today I want to talk about five car buying mistakes that I see a lot. So make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because you're not going to want to miss any of my car tours or car buying content. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. I've got five to talk about. The very first mistake I see people make is to not determine their budget ahead of time. So I am not a financial planner, but I will tell you that most of America spends about 12 to 15% of their monthly income on their car payment or on their vehicle needs. Whether that be a car payment or vehicle repairs, that's what the majority of the people are doing. But ultimately you and your family have to determine what is right for you. But whatever you decide your budget is, it is important that you are the one deciding it. Do not let a dealership or anybody else tell you that you need to spend X amount of dollars on a car per month. You determine your budget and you determine it ahead of time. But I would not just stop on determining what your budget is. I think it's really important to determine what kind of car you can get for your budget. I know that sounds kind of silly, but I see people all the time who will come into the dealership, look at a $40,000 car and think they're going to walk out of there with a $400 payment. And unfortunately, that is just not how it works. It is important to know that if you want to be at a $400 car payment, what your max vehicle price is. And there's a really great tool that you can actually use. One that I really like is car payment carpaymentcalculator.net. And here's a little bit about how it works. All right, so here's what carpaymentcalculator.net looks like. And here's one of the reasons I like it, because you can actually work backwards. Instead of putting the vehicle price and letting you know what the monthly payment is, you can work by monthly payment. So what I would do is first determine your budget with your family, with your husband, with your, with your significant other, or just with yourself, and say, okay, I know that I can afford a monthly payment of $575. You know, have an idea of what interest rate you think you might qualify for. So let's say I think that I'm gonna get around 2.9. dollars My sales tax will be around whatever, 7%, and then I'd like to finance the car for five years, 60 months. My trade-in value, so let's say I have a trade-in that is worth I think $10,000 based on my research, looking at Kelly Blue Book, maybe getting a price from CarMax, I think my trade is around $10,000. And let's say I still owe $5,000 on my trade-in. I'm gonna try to put no money down, and then I am going to calculate my max vehicle price. So now I can see that my max vehicle price is $35,635. That's my max vehicle price. My required loan amount would then be $30,635 because of course I had $5,000 in equity from my trade-in. So now going into it, if I wanna be at a $575 payment and finance it for five years, this is my max vehicle price. So now as I'm car shopping, I know what kind of vehicles to look for. Don't walk onto a lot, ask for payments on a Hyundai Palisade, and then realize that they are $800. You do not wanna get sticker shock because that's when people can make bad buying decisions and get serious buyer's remorse. Don't test drive cars out of your budget, don't look at cars out of your budget, and do not let the dealership tell you what your budget is. So that is tip number one. Okay, number two top car buying mistakes that I see is not doing your research on the dealership and on the salesperson. People spend hours researching what kind of car they're looking for. And a lot of people will actually read Google reviews about the different dealerships, you know, to try to find a dealership that seems to be reputable. But do not stop at the car or the dealership. Take it a step further and read reviews about individual salespeople. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can always look at Google reviews and see a salesperson's name who gets mentioned over and over again. But I also really like dealerrader.com. And here's how dealerrader works. Once you decide what kind of car you're gonna look for, let's say we're gonna look at a BMW. And let's say my zip code is 63141. Okay, so the first thing it's gonna do is actually pull up all the BMW dealerships near me. So that's helpful because then you can know exactly what your options are. Okay, so it looks like there's four within my area. It's by highest rated. So BMW of West St. Louis in Manchester, it's 5.5 miles away from me, and it is a 4.9 stars out of five. So the one below it is a 4.8, this one's a 3.6. And that one's a 4.9 as well. Um, but this one probably has more reviews, which is why it's rated number one. So on top of just looking at the dealership's rating, you can also see the individual salesperson. This is so important, and this is why this is my number two top mistake I see people make, 
because as women and as mothers, we're always worried about being taken advantage of. Well, if you are, if you choose your salesperson ahead of time, it puts you in control of who you want to work with. So read the reviews, maybe give your business to another woman, a mother, a father, or just someone who has a ton of five-star reviews. Just doing this simple step is going to drastically improve your car buying process. People always ask me how you can get car salesmen to take you more seriously as a woman. And my answer is we just don't. We're not going to worry about the people who are stuck in the 1950s who don't think you can buy a car by yourself. We're done with them. We are going to spend our time and energy on the good salespeople who are out here who truly want to help make your car buying experience great. So once I click on the dealership, it gives me a little bit about it, and then I can see all the employees. So right here, I have Veronica Tran. She's a client advisor. She has 280 reviews. So then I can go in here and actually see her dealership experience, any certifications she has, and then I can start reading the reviews. From here, I can literally book an appointment with Veronica, and that way I'm choosing who I'm going to work with. I'm not risking rolling up to the dealership and having whatever salesperson's available be the one to work with me. I'm choosing who I get to work with. All right, car buying mistake number three is not test driving the car. And I know some of you might be like, how would you not test drive the car? I see it all the time. There are so many reasons why you should test drive the car. And a lot of people test drive the car at one point, but then let's say they switch to a different car or they go to a different dealership. They think to themselves, oh, I've already driven a Ford Explorer. I don't need to drive this one. And you do. You need to drive for a couple of reasons. One, if you're looking at a used car, you need to drive the used car. You need to make sure that that car runs properly. And as far as new cars is concerned, I think it's important to go on the test drive no matter how many you've driven because you never know what that new salesperson is going to teach you. If you follow the second tip I gave by choosing a salesperson ahead of time, it's likely you're with one of the best salespeople at that dealership. So give that salesperson and yourself the opportunity to learn more about the car you're interested in. Make sure you test drive and make sure it is a good test drive. Don't piddle around in the parking lot. You drive that car how you would normally drive it. Take it on the highway. Get it over 60 miles an hour. Go to the Target parking lot if you need to figure out how you're going to park the car. Go through the Starbucks drive through if you want to know how sassy you feel in the Starbucks drive through And even ask to take the car home and see if it fits in your garage. Make sure you put that car to the test and drive it like you would drive your car. Car buying mistake number four is not forecasting how that car will grow with your family. I see a lot of first time moms come into the dealership, maybe they're pregnant with their first, or they just had their first, and they're finally ready to upgrade from that Toyota Camry they've had since college. It is such an exciting time to be buying your first mom car. But just because that car is working for you and your one child, do not forget to think about the future. If you are going to be financing a car for 60 months, 72 months, 84 months, you better make sure that car works for your family. Um, in my car buying workbook, which is available as a PDF download, I'll leave a link in the description box below. I actually give you a family planning map and I teach you how to forecast how that car is going to work throughout the entirety of your loan. Because while in 2021, you only have one baby, you think that a you know, a Volkswagen Tiguan works great. If you're gonna keep that car for six years, how many more kids are you gonna have? How much bigger are your kids going to get? Is that Volkswagen Tiguan really going to be working still? So I would definitely forecast how that vehicle is going to continue to work for your family. All right, and the mistake number five is not thinking about your exit strategy. So this kind of goes along with mistake number four, but it's basically the idea that think about how long you plan to keep this vehicle for, and what are you going to do when you get out of the vehicle? When you're done with the car, is it going to go to your husband? Are you going to try to sell it to your sister? Or are you going to try to trade it back into the dealership? What happens a lot of the time now is because cars are so much more expensive than they used to be, the financing terms are so much longer than they used to be. So now you can get into a new car for up to 84 months. But when you finance a car for that long, when you don't put any money down, when you defer your payments for six months, what that means is that you are paying off very little of the car by the time you get to that three-year mark, which most people people get a new car every 36 months. If you are not going to keep that car for 84 months, do not finance it for 84 months just to get the payment to work for you. It's really important to know that at the end of three years, are you going to want a new car? Is maybe leasing going to be the better option for you? Or are you truly going to drive this car till it dies? What I see happens all the time to people is they finance a car for let's say 84 months around month 48, they are so desperate to get out of the car because it's not working for their family because they had mistake number four and didn't forecast it, or they're just itching for a new car. 
They go to the dealership, they get their trade appraised, they figure out what their payoff is, and they are severely upside down, meaning that they owe more on their car than what their car is worth. That makes it very difficult to get out of that car without carrying over thousands of dollars in an equity, which in turn gives you a higher payment. So just make sure you are thinking about how long you're gonna keep the car for and what that car is going to be worth when you wanna try to get out of the car. Obviously things can change, we don't know how the market's going to be, but one tip I have is to look at Kelly Bluebick or some other trade appraisal site and figure out what the car you're looking at is worth three years prior. Okay, so that is going to wrap up my five car buying mistakes. Please give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video. As always, it was wonderful to talk to you. Make sure you follow me on Instagram because I post a lot more car related content there and I'll talk to you guys next time.